Prince George Kinoti is currently addressing the press. Let's cross over there and listen in live. The evidence, and uh, this evidence is actually to show that we have finished the first piece of our investigation, that it was not actually suicide, but it was cold murder, which was well executed, stage managed, but unfortunately, our experts here are smarter than the cold killers. This is a case of murder contrary to section 203, as rendered section 204 of the penal code, where the victim, our late brother, Sergeant Kipiegon, was found dead from a gunshot hood on the 20th February, the year 2020, at around immediately at a, a servant quarter, house number eight, Twiga Court at Vira Franca Estate in Mara Diamond. Occurrence of event prior to the incident. On the 14th February, the year 2020, DCI officers proceeded to Arambi House Annex, seeking to be provided with the CCTV footage covering the event of the 13th February 2020. The officers were denied access to the server and were only shown 23 minutes of footage which had, be, which, had taken, which had been taken from various cameras from the monitor, which is connected with the different cameras of the building. They were asked to record whatever from the monitor to record on their phones or with any other device they had record, but not to be given the extra. The enchant security refused to grant the officers access and to extract footage from the server claiming that it was not possible as it would allegedly interfere with the entire setup. <laughs> Doesn't turn up. The same footage is shown and you are going to be practically, you are going to see it exactly what we are talking about. The footage only shows the one which we were given for the 23 minutes. It shows that our suspect, who already uh, been presented to court with the involvement of international organized crime or fraud, and that is one Rashid Echesa, and the two victims, Hemta Arambi House Annex, and it, does, it, could, it did not show anywhere the involvement of the deceased. Neither the other accused persons, more so the one who was so-called general, Juma. They only provided an entertained version of events. On 20th February 2020, these officers returned to Arambi House Annex and they insisted on the entire footage and to be extracted from the server by our own experts who are with us here. Despite protest, the same was around and our expert forensically examined the servers and as opposed to the area sentiment realized it was possible to extract the entire footage. This was done and the analysis of the same is as follows. This one, I'll not because we have done it in writing, just the way it was extracted, but there is no need for me to go through it because we are going to see it practically. Will be I mean, uh, reviewed for you here. Uh, on the 13th February 2020, the cartels of the frontiers involving the suspect who we took to court and their accomplices, and we are going to see them, were seen entering the deputy president office through a CCTV footage and it leaves no doubt of the involvement of the deceased person in the said uh, involvement for you seen escorting the red general toward the VIP lift, where the general is carrying the envelope and the exhibit, which is the subject of the area matter. And now equally will be drawn to this matter, which now we have seen it will be a matter of interest. That was confiscated by the DCI officers during the arrest. The deceased is seen very well calling someone and handing over the mobile phone. We are going to see that 
the disease hole through, uh, sorry, I forgot my phone, I could have shown the BCD, is on core, all through and through. And uh, you are going to see it, and the way he's communicating, you can see he's handing over to the, to the so-called general, which means he's in getting instruction somewhere. And he's reading this very instruction to one of the core accused. And then after he finishes, then he picks, and then they enter the VIP boardroom. And then the, as it will be demonstrated, at this level of moment, the deceased officer is well, I mean, uh, it showed that he was absolutely involved, absolutely in terms of uh, the entry of the, uh, of the victims of the fraud, uh, and particularly now those who are, I mean, taking part uh, as the suspect, but not the victim. Contrary to 23 minutes, we have actually, and we are going to see it, from the time this visitor won, they are entering through the back door, carrying the actual exhibit, which will be manipulated somewhere there, it took one hour and 22 minutes and 59 seconds. From 8.50 uh, to 10 hours to 10, okay, we are going to see that, I don't need to see that, because we are going to see it practically there. On 18 February 20, all officers who were on duty at the Deputy President's office on the 13 February 2020 were all summoned to appear to this year in the quarters for interview and statement reckoning on the event described above. They were all assembled, including the deceased, on the same day and informed to appear at the DCI exquisite the following day, which was 19th. On 19th, all the officers as were told on 18th uh, assembled at DCI and quarters, except the deceased. And one officer who was seen to have been, I mean, uh, to have been close to the bereaved, on the same day, the DCI's officers investigating the matter trying to locate the deceased person in vain. Of course, when we called them on 19th, the forensic expert trying to see why is this officer not, because they were all persons of our interest at that particular time. Why is he? And of course, we have our own way of I mean, looking for somebody, even if maybe you have disappeared or you are not answering to a call, we always try to find out where could you be or rather what is happening. Since he failed to appear at this place of work on 19th February 2020, as was expected, his superiors did not endeavor to find out where he was, where he was, neither did they visit his resident to inquire into his whereabouts. It is worth noting that on 19th, 18th February 2020, there was a letter which was written to our Inspector General, uh, uh, and this letter which was written to our Inspector General, uh, it actually was entitled, um, Security breach in Arambe Hanex building, and I'm going to display it to you here, and we are going to be given a copy of the same. Uh, uh, it actually listed about 10 areas, specific 10 areas, which were to be investigated. You can see one, two, three, four, five, up to 10. And then to say that we are going to see it, this month is of great concern of the security and blah, 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 it's here. Then, on 19th, the Inspector General again received another letter, which was of course to be delivered to us, on 19th again. But something surprising, this letter, of 19th is specifically now going to any officer in our establishment who will be found culpable should be arraigned in court the soonest possible. We are going to see the sequence, the sequence of events. And then our questions had. This was the initial in rather guideline or in direction of our investigation. There is no one is, is telling us about the officer, any officer to be investigated and are dying to court. But now, there is 
boldness and audacity to tell us now, any officer, this is 19th. And then something surprising, if you are going to see these letters, you are going to see that uh, if you look at the handwriting, this is the Republic of Kenya Office of the Deputy President. This is the Republic of Kenya Office of the Deputy President. But uh, if you look at the, the reference, the reference here and another reference here is different. It is from the same office. Look at the, I mean, uh, the name of our Inspector General. Here it is, you can see the way it is. And then if you look at uh, uh, this is Arambe Anek building, this one is email. So you can see there's absolutely different between this and this. More or less, towards the right hand, so we see they are from different, okay, we shall be explained. We shall come to that because we have started investigating Manda. We shall have to be explained the sequence and what was it by that. This was the same day that the deceased was expectant at the DCI and the quarters for statement recording that he never made. So this is the 19th now. Morning is when we are looking for those officer. Is the, one, the time when he was supposed to be here. But now, this is the time when we would go for an officer now, but not on the team. A quick grant, okay, I will explain that. And then um, on 20th, February 2020, that is when the deceased was found dead. And this was established out of curiosity of his neighbors who had not seen the deceased. And when they closely examined his door, they realized it was not rocked from the inside with a pan rock. And it was slightly rat. These doors, for those who are at the scene with us, when you see the one which will just rock from the inside and then just a little bit, which means that somebody will just return the rush a little bit and then they left, uh, which was not usual. They opened it only to stumble on the dead body of our colleague, Sergeant Kinai. The deceased, the deceased and on 18th February 2020, called a close friend, a colleague, and inquired to be guided into how to record a statement, which implied that the red officer was ready to record a statement on 19th morning. There was an official statement of him having been missing on 19th, 20th, which begs the question, where was this information coming from? We have not been given any OB signal, the way or time we show the seriousness to declare somebody missing. It's not my Mary, he not, he's not answering his call. Maybe I'm in the country, I'm with you here. And then somebody is calling my me phone out in the office there and say, you know, he has gone missing. Come to the office or to my house, call my next of kin, call my children and NBCD, find out even where I live. To see now we have done all our effort to show that this person cannot be traced. You qualify that now to a person missing. But in the absence of all this effort tells us then, how do you declare somebody missing? Uh, the deceased, when actually he was found, he was wearing pajamas. He did not have shoes, no socks, which means when he entered his house, instinctively all well, what we do humanly because we actually have to borrow a lot of aspect on human psychology and what is expected of a human being when you enter this unharmed police officer with a fire he entered into house i don't expect him to forget to rock from the inside his house because it was still open go ahead remove his tie whatever may be remove first maybe the tie the coat but strip himself absolutely naked so as now to go to the extent now of putting a new pair of clothing, that is the pajamas. Remove shoes, remove socks, and then put the pajamas. That house is a small house for those who are with us there. There is no, I mean, there is no a stool, no seat. The only thing you can actually see, it, you can sit on a bed. And if you see the way that we met the bed, 
it was absolutely neatly spread that even you press a bottle like this, which has some weight, it can show you at least some depression. That forensically, what you call forensic examination. At least there is something, some weight, somebody, but it was absolutely uniform, showing there was absolutely no disturbance. Uh, we have endeavored to give some illustrations of how the body was found and the possible way we could have expected in the event this was suicide. This was the scene, the way it was found consistent with the allegation that he committed suicide. Now, through the illustration which we are going to give you, because now we have the scenes of crime photographs, but those ones since now we have started processing investigation of Manda, those will be processed at a next phase. But when the body was examined, the bullet was shot from the down chain here, and then it exited here, almost near the, I mean, the, 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 the front of the face here. And it was expected, if he was standing, I would remind you the most please. If he was standing, and this is the way he was shooting himself, and then definitely the entire spatter of either brand and brain, they were expecting to be somewhere here, because that's the direction of the trajectory of the ammunition after it has been ejected from the fire. And then when we are ejecting like that, definitely the cartridge is supposed even I'm like it goes on the right. There is no fire, and we have known that the ejector goes from the. We have not had one. But the one which he had, the ejector is on the right. When he shot himself, and what we ex were expecting up there was not consistent. It was not. There was no exit of the bullet or the spot of the umbrella. On the right. What we expected is some almost meters exit of the bullet head. And then we tried to bring all hypotheses, all our theory, to be fair, absolutely fair, that perhaps if it was suicide, then we rest it. And we say, may he rest in peace. It was unfortunate. And then we start only asking for what could have led to himself, killing himself, but could not have. So if then could have shot himself in business, no matter how we demonstrated to give the theory of the hypothesis some sense, they could not. And in the event, he, he could have completely strained. The bend is bad here. As we are going to see, we have, we have the illustrations with us here, and we are going to give it to you. Then definitely the automatic, because of the weight, he could have fallen on the bed. But what we are finding is absolutely stage money, something which is going to be opposite. Now, um, uh, there are quite a number of other things which I'm not going to take because my experts are going to be here. They are going to demonstrate to you during other issues. So, mine, I rest it there, and then I leave it to my colleagues. The forensic partners are here, the investigators are here. So, they are going to take you through the that what I've already talked about, the CCTV, see the involvement of the deceased and the possible reason why we could not be given it directly and the stage management, even you can see it started a long time ago. So from here, my colleagues who can take charge, so please, you are free. For any question uh, in terms of this matter, my colleagues are here, experts and actually who are smarter than me, as far as the forensic expertise is concerned, and they'll be able to give you uh, answers and then maybe take you through. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you.